on the 25th of December 2000, the Walking with Dinosaurs special, The Ballad of Big Al, was released, also known as just Allosaurus in the US. This special details the life and death of a real-life specimen of Allosaurus discovered in Wyoming, nicknamed Big Al. With Big Al being such a spectacular and well-preserved find, it makes for an excellent premise for a special, in my opinion. The specimen itself possesses several injuries, or pathologies, which lends itself well to interesting storytelling. Whilst Walking with Dinosaurs would usually focus on a few animals as the main focus for each of its six episodes, Big Al has one main character, that being the special's namesake, showing key moments in his life from hatching, hunting, sustaining injuries, and his eventual death. The special starts with the real-life skeletal mount of Big Al in Wyoming. It's certainly interesting seeing Big Al as a transparent ghost next to his skeleton in the museum at night. From this, we transition to the beginning of Al's story, hatching from his egg at the end of the dry season. We then see his mother approaching her nest, which gives us our first glimpse at the new Allosaurus model. Whilst this special reuses many of the models from the Walking with Dinosaurs episode Time of the Titans, which is also set in the late Jurassic Morrison formation, it's nice to see that they've put effort into improving the titular Allosaurus for this special. Whilst it's still not perfect and sadly quite shrink-wrapped on the face, it does fix the placement of the head crest and the skin texture looks more realistic overall and better animated. It's stated that the Big Owl specimen is dated to around 145 million years ago, the very end of the Jurassic period. Whilst the genus Allosaurus did live in the late Jurassic, in 2019, Big Owl itself was referred to a new species, Allosaurus gemadseni, which lived closer to 155 million years ago meaning it lived earlier than both the setting of this special as well as the younger species, Allosaurus fragilis, which we saw in Time of the Titans. This wasn't known at the time, however, and so restoring Al as the younger A. fragilis is more than reasonable. In short, this special should realistically take place before Time of the Titans rather than after it. Trivial paleontological errors aside, it is established that an important aspect of an Allosaurus' life is smell, right from the moment they hatch, forming a crucial early bond between mother and hatchlings. The baby Allosaurus animatronic looks really good too. I especially like that it's very different to the adult model. The use of practical effects in general is excellent in this special, with plenty of close-ups on distinct body parts. We are then treated to a wonderful aerial shot of a dry scrubland featuring some of the famous giants of the Morrison Formation. A pair of Brachiosaurus in the distance, a herd of Apatosaurus, a Stegosaurus accompanied by a group of Othnelia, and a flock of pterosaurs flying overhead. Simply magical. This touches on another point that sets this special apart from Time of the Titans, the portrayal of the Morrison. Whilst Time of the Titans showed a more lush and green environment, here we see a more realistic, semi-arid interpretation, and I really like that. I hesitate to call the Apatosaurus model new, as it's clearly based on the Diplodocus model, but with the dorsal spines removed and a more patchy skin texture. It doesn't look bad, but the similarities between the two are very apparent. Other than that, there's really not much to comment on. We then see another familiar face in two Ornithalestes stalking the young Allosaurus, but the mother keeps them at bay. The following shot is another gorgeous one, with a Brachiosaurus drinking in a full river and a Stegosaurus wandering in the background. This could be interpreted as a callback to the outdated view of sauropods living in swamps because they were too large to live on land, juxtaposed by the previous scenes showing them well adapted for terrestrial locomotion. In the next scene, we see Al's mother has brought her brood to the edge of the river, where we see the baby Allosaurus attempt to hunt some live-acted dragonflies, scorpions, and mud puppies with little success. The inclusion of extinct animals' modern equivalents is always appreciated by me. Later that night, one of Al's siblings is swiftly killed by a one-year-old Allosaurus. I appreciate this inclusion as it helps establish just how brutal the lives of carnivorous animals can be. The following scene cuts ahead to Al's second year, and we see he has grown considerably 
and leads a solitary life. The lack of red on his crest denotes his youth, and it's a nice touch on the modeler's part. This brings us to an interesting case, the Othnelia. The model itself bears a strong resemblance to the Lealanosaura, with a really striking colour scheme. However, this animal is now known as Nanosaurus. Fortunately, the model is quite accurate, though it possibly possessed feathers. In contrast to earlier, we see a mother Ornitholestes aggressively deter Al from her nest. We then get a proper introduction to Dryosaurus, who also seems to be based on Lealanosaura. I say proper, as I believe this was the small ornithopod we see in a handful of scenes in Time of the Titans that went unnamed. However, it could also have been Othnelia, or rather Nanosaurus, but it's really hard to tell. Much like the aforementioned dinosaur, it's fairly accurate, but may have had feathers too. Regardless, Al seizes the chance to hunt them, but they are far too fast for him to chase down. Al then proceeds to take his frustration out on a lizard, Something this special does very well is subtly showcasing aspects of ecology. To name a few examples, the flock of Othnelia, quote unquote, accompany the huge Stegosaurus to harvest the vegetation he destroys and for protection. Allosaurus showcases age-segregated niche partitioning, with young animals hunting insects and smaller dinosaurs, and older individuals hunting much bigger game. Perhaps the best example of this, however, is the predator trap scene. I would assume this is based on the interpretation of the famous Cleveland Lloyd dinosaur quarry as a natural predator trap. We see a Stegosaurus has sunk into the mud attempting to drink from the stagnant pool. Its rotten corpse has attracted several Allosaurus, including Al. We see two adult Allosaurus enticed by the proposition of an easy meal, but becoming trapped in the sinking mud themselves. Al watches on, having learned to avoid carcasses because of the huge predators they can attract. Later that night, the trapped Allosaurus pass away and are themselves scavenged by pterosaurs. I'm honestly not sure what genus these are meant to represent. They seem to be based on the Anurignathus model, but they're never named in the special. The following scene cuts ahead to Al's fifth year, and it is easily the highlight of the special. We have an interesting set piece in the form of a vast salt lake filmed on the salt flats in Utah, formed by the retreat of the Sundance Sea. We are reintroduced to a herd of migrating Diplodocus being hunted by Al and several other Allosaurus. They all target one ill individual and scatter the herd. The music here is nothing short of amazing and almost sounds like Star Wars at some parts in my opinion. Ben Bartlett really gave this track his all. The animation and cinematography are also top notch. We see many low and intense shots of Allosaurus running, collapsing, and near misses amongst the herd. Once successfully isolated, the sick Diplodocus still manages to knock Al down, just one of many injuries he receives in his life. Over time, heat exhaustion kills off the Diplodocus and the Allosaurus feed. We then see an awesome heat haze effect on a huge female Allosaurus approaching from the distance, harkening back to the smell of meat attracting large predators. This is one of my favourite scenes in the entire Walking With series, if not my pick for number one. The next scene cuts to Al's sixth year, and after such an intense segment, the scene starts with a very laid-back tone. We see interesting behaviour with a... Dryosaurus, I think? Having to swim across a swollen river. A pair of Stegosaurus are again accompanied by a small flock of Ophnelia slash Nanosaurus, and the two attempt to mate before being interrupted by Al, whose crests have now turned red, signifying sexual maturity. The little splash the Stegosaurus makes is also a nice touch. We then see Al sniff the dung of a female Allosaurus, harkening back to smell being important to Allosaurus as stated earlier. Al issues a mating call, but he is greeted by an uninterested and hostile older female. Pushing his luck, the female violently tackles Al to the ground and slashes at him with her claws. The following scene shows the Morrison in the midst of the dry season, showing how animals are struggling to cope in such arid conditions. The dried corpse of a... Uh, uh, of a Nanosaurus 
is scavenged by a pterosaur before it itself is devoured by a partially healed owl. Still hungry, Al attempts to hunt a nearby flock of Dryosaurus. Whilst the narration states he has done this countless times, this attempt actually goes even worse than his attempt earlier in the special. One Dryosaurus knocks over a log, causing Al to trip and break a toe. Over the course of the special, we see the Morrison transition from semi-arid savanna and scrubland to a sandy desert. Al's condition worsens, his middle toe becoming heavily infected. The drought continues and ultimately costs Al his life. As if coming full circle, we see a brood of hatchling Allosaurus gather around Al's corpse in a dry riverbed, having never reached full size. Ironically, the rains eventually came, but they were too late to save Al. This is followed by a cool transition to the skeletal mount, showcasing many of the injuries seen throughout the special. There is also a making of video after the actual movie, detailing the fossil remains of Allosaurus, its biomechanics, and the classic Walking With series cheese. I really like this, and I wish more documentaries did this. In conclusion, The Ballad of Big Al is fantastic. The storytelling is compelling and believable. The visuals and animation are wonderful, and the score is amazing. What's strange is that I don't usually consider this to be one of the best in the Walking With series, yet on review, even 20 years later, I enjoyed it immensely. I highly recommend giving it a watch. Thank you so much for watching, and on the screen, there should be a link to a review of the Collecte Allosaurus to coincide with this video, so go ahead and give that a watch too if you like. Thank you, Bye bye now.